Dude, I don't know how these people upload, like, fucking 500 fucking torrents in this shit, okay? I did fucking 40 last night, and I want to kill myself. I didn't even do 40. I did, like, 20. This is the most... This is the this is the most agonizing. This is the most difficult work I've ever had to do in my entire life. Is going through these fucking torrents and actually uploading them. And now I'm cucked. I'm dirty as fuck. Look at my neck beard. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I got a tweet earlier because somebody was asking me about um, about trying to stream on 4G internet. And this is something that I've tried to do before, but it doesn't really seem to work. Um, so I, and I didn't want to really explain this via text because it's. it's cancerous as fuck to type out on text so i um uh, so i'm just going to do a voice explanation the reason why you can't really stream on 4g is because in order to stream you need a very special thing from your internet connection that you don't need in anything else you do in your life beyond streaming which is a stable upstream that means you cannot have an upstream that does this kind of shit that looks like a fucking heartbeat monitor right it has to be stable because anytime you dip below the threshold that you're asking obs to output if, you, if you're trying to stream at two megabits per second or four megabits per second or whatever every time you dip below that threshold you're either going to run into frame drop or if you dip low enough, your stream will cut out completely and shit will get fucked. The problem is, whenever you take an internet speed test to measure your bandwidth, I guess if you think about it like um, th like early calculus, right? You know how like um, you know you know how when you do a graph, you know the difference between like measuring an instantaneous um, what is it like an instantaneous rate of change versus taking the entire area under the curve. W when you when you're taking internet speed over time, that that number doesn't matter because what. What, some, what sites like speedtest.net or whatever are telling you are they're telling you how much internet speed do you have when you're downloading a large file, right? They use a sample like a 100 megabyte file, you download it, and then how fast you download it is the speed that they give you. But what that doesn't tell you is while you're downloading, did your downstream look like this shit, right? Because it doesn't really give a fuck about the ups and downs of your, of your connection. It just cares like how fast over a period of time are you able to download your shit. So the problem with 4G connections is even if you have a lot of bandwidth available, Available, even if the connection looks good, you're getting 100 down and 50 up. That 50 up is probably not a rock solid 50 up all the time. It's probably dipping and going like fucking crazy, depending on, I don't know, how you wave your cell phone, depending on interference in the area, and depending on the other people on your network utilizing the network as well. Right? So I don't think that 4G is, I, I guess it's possible depending on the type of 4G you have, but um, it would be really hard to ensure that you have a reliable 4G connection for streaming. Doesn't speed test have a sister site that tests stability? Uh, maybe I don't know. Speed test is not a good uh, measure of your speed either, um, because speed tests are always in network. Um, they always make sure that the routing to these servers that you run the speed test to is optimal, so that you're probably always going to get better results to a speed test server than you will to like in real life applications. But the thing, oh, I'm sorry. The the thing is, the net doesn't completely drop out; it just resets. Wouldn't it drop my whole net? Um, no. So this again, this is the frustrating thing with streaming is that. Um, when you when you are using the internet, right? When you're using the internet, you're not actually um, you're not actually like hardcore using it all the time. For instance, if I go and visit a, a website, okay? So okay, let's we're gonna browse the internet. Okay, Reddit.com. When I push enter, okay, my computer is sending your browser is sending a request to the web server and then it's getting something back. And now while I'm viewing the page, more or less nothing is going on. Okay, so we did that little we did that little request, then we got our information back, and now nothing is happening. Now while I'm scrolling down this page right now, my net could be dropping out, and I would have no idea, right? Because I'm just scrolling a page and I'm not really asking for anything, right? Now if I click something, I could click something. Maybe there's a second of lag because my internet did drop out, and then the page loads, right? We do our little request, we get our information back, right? Internet usage in general can be very sporadic. You don't need a rock solid connection to do it. So if you're just browsing the internet or if you're looking at a chat room or something while your 4G connection is on, it might you might get the impression that, well, only my stream is dropping. I don't understand why. Well, that's because a little blip that's dropping in your stream will be immediately noticeable because you're real time utilizing a ton of upstream, right? So a little blip, you'll notice it immediately. Whereas a little blip in a chat room or a web page isn't really gonna be noticeable because you're not doing like real time data transfer like it can have little blips and it doesn't make a, it's not a big deal right what if i lower the bitrate to literally 1500 without help at all i don't know how low your internet is dipping um it's hard to say it's hard to say you would have to get a different tool i don't know what tools exist to measure the um, abilities of your internet but you would have to get a more specific tool to test how low your bandwidth is dropping because it's possible that your bitrate is dropping all the way to 50 or 100 or zero like but or maybe it's dropping to 2k or maybe it's dropping to 1k i don't know the 1500 might help it might not help i don't know 
Usually ISPs have their own apps to test their current up or down. Um, yeah, they um, kind of. Fuck. How do I how do I say this? I can't think of anything be beyond like the. Um, What, when you measure a derivative, that's a rate of change is something per second, right? Like five miles per second would be a rate of change, right? Dude, it's been so long since I've taken a math class. Um, but like the, the instantaneous rate of change is what you're concerned about at all points in time and not just the entire, not just the entire like area under the curve, not the entire integral. Does that make sense? I, I don't know how to explain it. Um, I could try hooking in my monitor. To draw a picture. Hold on. I don't actually, I don't think we're talking about rate of change at all. I don't know why I bring it. I think it only has to do with integrals. Okay, this is what I'm trying to say, okay? Let's say that the person on the left has a connection that looks like this, okay? This is our connection, all right? We're going to have, or actually, here, I'll just do it on the same one, okay? This is our speed. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So, a person on the left's internet is going to look like this. Okay. It's going to go up to five and it's going to remain there for um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. My graph is fucking horrible. Okay. Anyway, person's internet speed goes up to five and it stays that way for one, two, three, four, five ticks. Okay. Bam. This is this person's line, okay? So what happens is this guy, um, this guy does a speed test, right? And as soon as he starts downloading the file, his downstream goes to up to five megabits per second, right? Up to five megabits per second. And in five seconds, right? One, two, three, four. In five seconds, he downloads his file, right? And your speed test has, has given you the result that your, your download is five megabits per second, right? Well, the problem is somebody else could have an internet connection that looks like this. They go up and they start downloading the file, okay? Now, we start at 10, and then we go down to, um, and then we go down to zero, and then we go up to five, and then we do one more five, um, and, and then we go down to, or, and then we'll do one more five. We'll just do one more five to keep it simple, right? Fuck me. Um, where's my eraser? Eraser, right? Hold on. I don't think this is correct. Wait. Okay, so we start at 10. So from 10 to here, this averages out at 5. Um, this would have to go up farther. Fuck. Um, this could go up to like 7.5 and then come down here, I think. All right, like this. <laughs> I, I think that works. And then we erase this. Okay, so this, okay, so let's say we have two different internet connections, okay? The guy on the left downloads something, right? Tick, 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 tick. All five ticks, he's got good downstream, right? And he does it. Other guy downloads something, and it goes spikes up, goes down, spikes up, blah, 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 okay? The problem is that when you look at the total data transferred over five seconds, right? Which is essentially if we integrate both of these functions, right? And we take how much information is under both of these, the information comes out to being the same, right? You end up downloading the same. So a speed test will report both of these back to you as saying like, hey, good job, you can download five megabits per second, right? Without telling you the actual quality of your line, right? Maybe it was like jittery as fuck. Maybe you had high peaks and, and low valleys. You don't actually know. Maybe it was rock fucking solid and you downloaded a steady stream the entire time. The thing is, the speed tests aren't capable of determining that, right? Okay, I'm sorry. That's all I wanted to, for that. Holy shit. Um, in terms of, oh, I'm sorry. How would I find out? Um, in terms of how, finding out how jittery your line is, you would, have to get, um, you would have to get some kind of tool that tests your line's jitter. But I don't know how you would do that. Um... I don't know if Ping Plotter really tests bandwidth. He doesn't even read this forehead. Listen, dude, I fucking read everything, you fucking cuck ass piece of shit motherfucker. I am so confused. Let's start again. Wait, so do you not understand anything I said? Basically, what I'm saying is. Okay. Basically, what I'm saying is, let's say that you have two bottles of water, and both bottles of water have your internet, okay? In one bottle of water, you put a straw in it, okay? You put the straw in, and you sip the internet, right? 
The internet comes out nice and fucking smooth, okay? And it goes into your mouth and down your throat exactly how everything is supposed to, right? Nice and smooth and everything works fairly. Now, let's say that on the other hand, let's say that you have a bottle of water, the same bottle of water, and you hold it up ahead of your face like this and you hold it down and you just fucking squeeze it, right? How does the water come out? Sometimes a fuck ton comes out and then it goes and it doesn't really work, right? A fuck ton comes out and then none comes out and then fuck and then none comes out and it doesn't work that way, right? You can't drink, you can't drink that shit, right? It's fucked. It's totally fucked. It has to be in a it has to be in a steady stream because in order to drink it, right? So that that's like having the jittery line would be like having the water bottle. Even though you're getting the same amount of water out, it doesn't really work for what we're doing, right? Which is trying to stream. That's why um I don't think 4G the only suggestion that I can give you is if you have um if if you are very tech savvy, or if you have a friend that's really tech savvy, or if you want to pay somebody that's really tech savvy, um is you, you can set up an, an, what is it called? Like an NGIX server that Jim recommended, N-G-I-N-X. One thing you could do is you could set up a server and then you stream to that server and have that server stream to Twitch. So you would basically stream data that server. So if you have jittery things in your line, it can kind of sort it out because that server is collecting the data and then sending it off with a slight delay towards Twitch. Um, that, but that, that's a significantly more complicated solution. I've never even tried to do that before. I, it might not be that hard to set up, but if you're not very tech savvy, I'm not sure. Honestly, I think your best bet is, is trying to procure another internet connection. I, I think that doing the engine, engine X shit or whatever, I don't, I, that server sounds like it would be very complicated, and I'm not even sure if your line would sustain it, if even that would work. And on top of all of that, I'm not even sure if, um, or you would start to chew through data really fast. I don't, if you haven't done the, um, if you haven't done the math, um, you'll, I think you'll be surprised to find out how much data you can use streaming. Like, it gets pretty ridiculous.